It turns out that there is a name for the non-intersecting path family symmetric functions that we've been working on. They're called sure functions. Let's let H be the infinite tuplets matrix. whose entries are complete homogeneous symmetric functions. All right, now we're looking for bases of the space of homogeneous symmetric functions of degree n. Not complete homogeneous necessarily, but recall that homogeneous also means that every monomial has the same degree. Since I'm going to be using homogeneous in two senses, I think I'll say complete homogeneous for these symmetric functions that are named by H's, and I'll just say homogeneous for any symmetric function that has all the monomials having the same degree in it. So I claim that every minor of this matrix H is a homogeneous symmetric function. So not necessarily complete homogeneous. So to see this, let's consider a, a square submatrix consisting of consecutive rows and consecutive columns to begin with. Let's start with HK. and go all the way up to h k plus n minus 1 so that we have n columns and n rows. So then we'll have h k minus 1 here, h k there, because h k, all the, the different functions are going to be have indices that are constant on diagonals. We've got hk minus 2, hk minus 1, hk, hk plus n minus 3. And let's see, k minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, so we'll have h sub k minus n plus 1 will be the last one. So we're subtracting 0, 1, 2, subtracting n minus 1 here. Then we'll have h, k minus n plus 2, h, k minus n plus 3, etc. And then this last one will be h, k, actually it'll be 
H sub K, because the H sub K's are going to be on the diagonal. Now I want to prove this for every minor, not just the ones with consecutive rows and columns. So this is a special case. This is a special case of consecutive rows and columns. Now the degree of the IJ entry is K plus J minus I. So it's K when I and J are equal, and then it's K plus 1 when J is 1 bigger than I, and K plus 2 when J is 2 bigger than I, etc. So that's the, the formula for the degree of the IJ entry for every every position here. Now the terms of determinant of this matrix, let's say this is A, there are things like without the sign just AI a1, W1, A2, W2, up to An, Wn. And this product has degree. So we're multiplying all these functions, so the degree is going to be the sum of these degrees. So degree of A1, W1, plus degree of a2, W2, etc. Which is going to be K plus W1 minus 1, J minus I, plus K plus W2 minus 2, etc. K plus WN minus N, which equals, we've got K N times N K, and then W1 plus W2 plus W3 up to WN, well those are just the numbers 1 through N, and then minus 1, minus 2, minus up to N, so those are minus the numbers 1 up to N. So these numbers all cancel those out, and we're left with nk. So in the special case that we have consecutive rows and columns, um, every term of the determinant like this is going to have degree nk. Therefore, when we take the determinant and add plus these and minus these together, we're all the, they're all going to have degree nk, and therefore the, the determinant is going to have degree nk. All right, now let's look and see what happens if we remove a column somewhere else in the infinite uh, toplets matrix and have a, a square matrix where the, the columns are not necessarily consecutive. So now let's consider moving a column so any one column to the right in the infinite matrix. By that I mean, so if we're considering something like h4, h5, h6, h3, h4, h5, h2, h3, h4. 
So we move the last column in places to the right in the infinite matrix. So we'll have H4, H5, H6 plus M, and then H3, H4, H5 plus M, H2, H3, H4 plus M. So we're moving that, that column somewhere else. We're taking two consecutive columns and then, or n minus one consecutive columns and let that nth column be taken from someplace further to the right. Now every term in the determinant is going to have, it's going to be a product of n entries. One of those entries is going to come from the last column. And that entry just increased its degree by m. So now every term in the determinant of, well, the modified version of A, where we took one column and moved it, every term in the determinant has degree m greater than before. but it's still homogeneous because we're going to take a linear combination of, de of uh, products, all of which have degree kn plus m, and therefore the, the determinant is going to have degree kn plus m. Now the degree is kn plus m. And it's easy to see that we didn't have to use the, the last column to do that. We could have moved any column m places to the right. And again, the uh, every term in the determinant would get degree m greater than it had before. And we could do it with two columns, three columns. We could do this with any number of columns. We can do something similar with any column, any subset of columns. In fact, any row or subset of rows. So The determinant of any square submatrix of the infinite triplets matrix one, H one, H two, H three, etc. is a homogeneous symmetric function. All right, so let's look at these homogeneous symmetric functions to see if we can find a basis. So basis of lambda n, which is the homogeneous degree n symmetric functions. Let's try n equals 2. So we have determinant of, we could take the one by one matrix that has h2 in it, or we could take 
the two by two matrix that has H1, H1, and H2 and one. So H1's on the diagonal, H2 and one here. Let me draw one more line into this infinite matrix. So this is consecutive columns and rows, consecutive columns and rows. But we could take H1, H3, 0, H1. Now this determinant is H11 minus actually 0. It's just H11. And that determinant is H2. And this determinant is H11 minus H2. So we've got three symmetric functions here. For a space, lambda 2 of dimension 2. And remember, the, the dimension of lambda n is the number of partitions of n. The dimension of lambda 2 is the number of partitions of 2, which is the cardinality of the set 2, 1, 1, so 2. So I guess this isn't a basis because it has too many elements in it. But if we were to throw out this last minor here, where I didn't take consecutive columns or consecutive rows, then we'd have two symmetric functions, h2 and h11 minus h2. And, and that would be a basis. Let's take only minors coming from consecutive rows and columns. Let's look at n equals 3 and have, see how that goes. So we've got determinant of the one by one matrix H3, which equals H3. We've got determinant of the three by three matrix, which has H1s on the diagonal. And I don't think we can take consecutive rows and columns and get something which is homogeneous of degree three. If if the diagonal has ones on it, then we've got one plus one plus one equals three. But if it has twos on it, a single two is too small, and two twos is four, which is too big. So this isn't enough. So not enough elements for a basis. So let's try sort of a hybrid. Let's insist on consecutive columns, but not consecutive rows. So let me rewrite this matrix here so we can use it if we need to. Let's try consecutive columns not necessarily consecutive rows. So 
So we'll keep those two choices for matrices whose determinants have degree three. And now we can take, let's see, consecutive columns, but not necessarily consecutive rows. That allows us to take an H2 and an H1 on diagonal. So that's H21 minus H3. That has degree three. And the number of partitions of three, well, the dimension of lambda three is the number of partitions of three, which is three of them. So that's good. We've got three potential basis elements. All right, and the definition of sure functions is that the sure functions are going to be determinants of these submatrices. This is the Jacobi Trudy definition. Of sure functions. He's originally in Schur's PhD thesis around 1894. He was working with Frobenius. So we'll define capital H lambda to be Submatrix of the infinite Toeplitz matrix of complete homogeneous symmetric functions. The one that I have right here. having consecutive columns and H lambda 1, H lambda 2, etc. H lambda, let's say there's L parts in lambda. On the diagonal. Now, since we're taking consecutive columns, the indices are going to go up by one every time we go to the right. So we get h lambda 1, h lambda 1 plus 1, h lambda 1 plus 2, etc. To the right of h lambda 2 is h lambda 2 plus 1, and to its left is h lambda 2 minus 1. Because when we go to the left, the index goes down by one. So we define H lambda to be this matrix and S lambda to be the determinant of H lambda. So let's try this for N equals three. So S three is the determinant of the matrix whose only entry is H3, so that's H3. S21 is the determinant of the matrix that has H2 and H1 on the diagonal. Increase the index to H3 here, decrease the index to H0, which is defined to be 1. So we've got H21 minus H3. And then S111 is the determinant of the matrix that has 
one H ones on the diagonal. And that's H one 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 plus zero plus H three minus zero minus H two one minus H two one. So minus two H two one. So So that means that S3, S21, S111 equal, we wrote those in terms of homogeneous symmetric functions, H3, H21, H111. We've got S3 equals H3, so one of those and zero of the others. S21 is H21 minus H3. S111 is H111 minus 2H21 plus 1H3. Now we don't know that sure functions form a basis yet or that homogeneous symmetric functions form a basis yet. But if the transition matrices continue looking like this, uni triangular, then we're going to know that either both of them are bases or neither of them is because they're related by these invertible matrices. It's going to turn out that both of them are. Let's define numbers r lambda mu by sure function s lambda equals the sum of r lambda mu complete homogeneous symmetric function h mu. Then it turns out that r lambda lambda equals 1 for all lambda and r lambda mu equals 0 if mu is not greater than or equal to lambda in the dominance order.